I'll stop there. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, I'd love to play music with you, Max. <laughs> I still don't know who was playing. Uh, Carol. Ah, thank you. Oh, I see. Yeah, I'm not here. Uh, and the timing, I'm sorry, it's, um, I messed up, but um, I, I honestly messed up. I didn't even realize I was messing up. I was sure I'm starting at the right time. No mess ups. <laughs> no we, time. We no. already knew that because we are good in telepathy. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Let, 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 me, uh, let me start. Um, I think I'm good. Oh, no, I need to click one more button. Uh, almost ready, speakers. Oh, that's good. Uh, I think I'm good now. No, almost. Uh, almost there. <laughs> Now it's perfect. Allah ya ya hanna humma ya hanna humma hanna. How is the sound? Great. Can hear you well. Good. Alaya Hanna Hamahaya Hanna Oraya Hanna Hamahana Alaya Hanna Allah <clears throat> Today, I will talk about self-realization. There are many meanings of self-realization, many paths, many understandings. I'll speak about two meanings. One, just realizing who you are, realizing self, discovering who you are, awakening to who you are. So self-realization as awakening. And another one. Self-realization as action. Realizing yourself manifesting yourself expressing yourself. So self-realization as awakening and self-realization as expression. This is a wonderful duality, very creative duality. You can do both at once. As you awaken to yourself, as you discover who you are, you jump, you can choose to jump, you can choose to express what you are, you can choose to express your new 
understanding of yourself. And as you go into the world, as you express yourself, as you express yourself in life, in the dream of life, as you express yourself in the dream of life, unavoidably, surely, you discover yourself. Just choosing to act, choosing to express, brings you surely to better understanding who you are. Your initial impulse, your original impulse in life was to act, was to express, was to go into the world, was to share yourself to the world. And yet, the 3D life of Earth is harmful. And all of you, without exception, were harmed, traumatized, repressed, cultivated. You obtained culture, you were cultured, you were restricted. Culture is restriction. You were brought up, you were educated. You were given and with this given that was taken away, much of your freedom was taken away, much of your personality was restricted and repressed. It was restricted and repressed to the, to the such extent, to such extent that many of you lost yourself, many of you lost much of yourself. When you are asked, when you are asked who you are, what's your specific mission, what's your specific purpose, what's your specific vibration, what is unique about you? Many of you don't know. Many of you. It's good. Thank you. Fine. But then, every one of you, <laughs> every one of you came back to awakening came back to the process of self-realization, self-purification, self-awakening, self-discovery, spiritual path. Every one of you is on spiritual path consciously. You chose to be on spiritual path. You chose the spirit. You chose a leap of faith. You chose to trust, you chose to believe, you chose to seek God and love God, often without evidence, often just by pure leap of faith. And in this process you learn how to purify yourself, how to purify yourself from extraneous, unneeded, old restrictions, old dirt, old education, old restrictive beliefs. So you purify yourself. You purify yourself through
reconsidering. You purify yourself through reconsidering your belief system. You are reconsidering, reanalyzing, re-evaluating your old beliefs, all of you now. That's what all you do. And I thank you for that. Purification is an absolutely essential process. It allows you to grow your spirit, to grow into your spirit, and to unite with your spirit, to unite with your higher self, with your soul, with your oversoul, and ultimately with God. Mother, Father, God. Mother, Father, Son, God. So purification, harmonization is essential. And many of you separate yourself from the world because it is the path of purification. Separating yourself, building filters, building walls, creating sacred space within yourself and creating space in your body and creating space around yourself. So now you become pure and strong. Now you found peace. Now you are bathed in love. Now you learn to heal yourself. Now you are becoming whole again. You are whole, holistic, united, unified, harmonized. You are now in peace with yourself. Peace is so sweet. It's so bright. It's so full of love. You are now full of your own, full of your own essence. You discovered yourself. You have awakened to yourself. You have awakened to your spiritual side. You are not a mortal body anymore. You recreated a bridge and united with your soul. Now you are connected. <laughs> and the next step could be your choice to self-express. It's an avoidable, inevitable choice. When you discovered, when you reunited with yourself, when you found the inner strength, inner energy, inner power, you can now come back to the world. You can express yourself in life. It's a choice. It's always a choice. And even if you choose not to, even if you choose to stay in your shell, even if you choose to work on your body and physiology, on your health, your purification, it's still all right. It is, a, it is still a way of expression. It is still a way to transform not only inside, but outside. The outside world is affected by your physiology. Contrary to the common misconception, contrary to the mainstream separateness, Separatedness, separateness. 
your physiology is creating the outside world. All of you, just by the fact of living, contribute to creation, sustenance, continuation, and transformation of the outside world. Even if you pray, pray in a, in a cave, in your monastery, in your apartment, in your room, if you are secluded, separated from the world, even if you only work on yourself and inner purification, you still contribute to the continuation and the transformation of the outside world. But yet, you can choose to go out and face people. You can choose to go out and face people and see who they are and allow them to be who they are and speak to them in their language. Be with them. Be with them in your heart. Be with them fully. And work on transformation of the world. Now, as you are awakened, you can come back. You can dive in the world. My dear spiritual brother, a guru of my guru, Lahiri Mahashi, had a mission to be a guru, to be a saint, to be an enlightened teacher, a holy man in the world, going all life to his job and doing his job honestly. Full-time employment, having a family, and yet being a guru, being a holy man, and having a following, and working with his dis disciples. For that time, it was a novelty, it was a step forward. It was a step into the future. It was a window into the future. Now all of you can do the same. Being a holy man in the world, stepping down, being with people, living the life. I guess you have comments and questions. If you do, go ahead. Namaste, Yogananda. This is Marianne. Namaste, Marianne. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to share with you a dream I had or experience I had in the astral. And I was wondering what you think about it. Um, <clears throat> well, actually, this, this, this one that I wanted to share was um, <laughs> not necessarily a story. It was a message. That's what it was. Um, the message I got, I was awakened to this message at 5 p.m. Uh, a.m. in the morning. And it was very strong. It said, you are the silver cord. You are the silver cord 
you are the silver energy. And it was really potent. And I had to write it down. You know, I, w I awakened and it felt like I was with higher being, possibly you. I was wondering who that was and what that meant. Just a moment. All right, the being is an angel, but they don't show me their face. There is a feminine side to them as well. And the message is, there are, no, the interpretation, my interpretation, there are many ways to look at it, many ways. There is always many ways. It's ambivalent, it's always ambivalent. It's for you to choose the interpretation. But, one of the takes on it, one take on it is that there are two types of energy. The healing energy. One is golden, which is diffuse. It's very feminine, very intuitive, very healing. It's passive. It just goes and helps passively. Is the energy of life. It is like fluid, like water of life. Golden energy. And there is silver energy. So golden energy goes from your palms, from your heart. It is enveloping. It's beyond space and time. It is the basis of the life. And silver energy grows from your fingers. It is sharper. It's also healing, but it is proactive. It's actively doing things. It is more masculine. It's more forceful. There is more real power in it. It has more presence in space. It's most expressed. It is expressed more. It's closer to actually doing things. <laughs> so that message by coincidence, maybe, magically corresponds to the last message I had just a minute ago. Go do, go do, go express yourself. Yes, yes. Thank you, Yogananda. Go ahead. Is there any, anything else? I also have a dream when we are already with, mm -hmm. started with dreams and dream world can be the door to, uh, to our soul. So here is one of many, many dreams. But this was obvious and not obvious and I would like you to comment on that it i was in the uh, uh temple there was three altars with deities on everything was in white including deities everything snow white everything on the right side was a sitaram altar and slowly the white color was disappearing and everything became like a forest and Sitaram became alive. It was like the window into the world. 
the birds was singing everything everything else was in white but this altar was became completely alive in front of me see it around so it is obvious dream but still i would like to know uh, if you can tell me something more about my connection to sitaram just a moment So did you say there were extraterrestrials? Uh, well, that was the dream. That, that was nothing more than that. That was nothing extraterrestrial except Sita Ram, they are uh, Ram, Lord Ram and Sita, his wife. Uh, they are gods in Hindu tradition. One of gods. Extraterrestrial, yes, they are. They are not from here. But nothing else. Hmm. <laughs> Mm. I see, yeah. <laughs> Again, that it will be my interpretation. Um, for you, the idea was that I guess the key is Sita, the wife, the acceptance. When I was listening to your story, I was flooded with golden energy, flooded. And everything was saying, warmth, warmth, golden, golden, golden. So the balance between silver and golden is what gives life to white so white is a symbol of perfection without life there is too much perfection too much harmony there but to make it alive you need a play between silver and golden between ram and sita between the idea and acceptance between the action and self-discovery so for self-realization, you need both. And then it becomes alive. Man and woman, creator and the creation, desire and support, desire and love, purpose and manifestation of the purpose. So for you personally, I would interpret this message as accept, accept yourself and discover in yourself the golden side, the supportive side, the feminine side, the, the feeding side, the allowing side. In addition to action, the ability to listen and transform inside listen and becoming vulnerable, absorbing in a healthy way, absorbing with love, taking the world inside and transforming it through love. So changing yourself through love, that's Sita. So that's the message, changing yourself through love.
I will continue my story. I have a question. I would like to know, I have taken on the pain of the world in Gaia, and I've been coughing it out for three days, <laughs> all day long, and uh, I have pain throughout my chest and my back, from top to bottom, and I would like to know what more I can do to get it over with. Thank you. Can't hear Yogananda. The sound is down. We can't hear you, Max. hear any of the channeling from that answer just so you know oh wow can you hear me now yes oh wow <laughs> wanted to jump in there and tell you <laughs> thank you oh i see yeah that was um yogananda just max was speaking and yogananda just blocked it all together so let me say, Max was speaking, check out, maybe you need antibiotic. And Yogananda says, let me see, let me bring Yogananda back. Yogananda just says, I will be with you, accept my love, it's easy to get rid of it, it's just neuro neurotic, it is just mm, psycho psychoneural, it all is all coming from the soul and expresses itself, it is easy to move it out, so that's what he says, and I will give you a chant and just accept it with healing and it will go away. Um Allah 
I uh, clear it out, you will be good. You will be better very soon. You are healing right now. Accept peace and healing. It's coming. It is within you. It's from inside, from the heart. The shine from the heart. The light from the heart. Just coming out, pushing the junk out, pushing the pain out. It will go away. You will be perfect. Allah, Put your hands on your heart. Put your palms on your heart. Accept my healing. It's coming to you and uh, it's up to you. Just accept it. I'm with you. I am inside. I'm coming through your heart. And I need to shine through your spine to clear the pain there. Push the door down. Push the junk down. Push the pain down. Let it go away from your body. Secrete it. Excrete it. Push it out. Keep breathing. Keep breathing consciously and deeply. When you breathe in, take in the healing. I need oxygen. We need oxygen to oxidize the junk, oxidize the molecules of pain. And when you breathe out, release the smell, release, they come out as smell. The spirit of evil comes out as smell. So release it, release it, release it. Release it, release it, release it. Allah, Allah, Allah. Invite God, invite Mother God, invite Mom and Dad, Mom, Dad, and Son. Help me. I invite your help. I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for healing. I am thankful. Thank you, Mother, Mom, Dad, Son, God. Thank you. Thank you for healing. I accept it. I accept it. I accept it. I accept it. I accept life. I choose to live. I will be good. Thank you. Allah, 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 Ram, 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 Sita, Ram, 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 Sita, Ram, 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 Sita, Ram, 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 Sita, Ram. Rum, rum, rum. Just accept it. Take it easy. Relax. <clears throat> Am I still online? Am I still her? her? Can you see? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. 
Thank you. Bless you. I bless you too. Thank you. I felt it go. Thank you. Thank you. So next question is, how can you focus on awakening and expression? How can you focus on self-discovery and self-expression at the same time? And there is one answer, you can. It's okay, it is perfect, it is possible, and it is easy to combine the both. As you go forward in life, as you live your life, as you express yourself through health and energy, you discover yourself. Through your body, you discover yourself. By pushing, populating yourself, by pushing your spirit into the body and populating the body with your spirit. You discover who you are as a spirit because your body reflects to you the inner workings of your spirit, it reflects to you the signature of your spirit. Just wor by working on your health, you discover your spirit. You discover who you are. By going to people, people reflect to you who you are and you recognize what is really you and what is not you. What it was brought to you by the world. You recognize the contaminations. You recognize the impurities by going into the world and speaking to people, by working with people, by loving people, you discover yourself. So self-awakening and self-expression can be done simultaneously as one breath. Yet, self-purification needed for your health requires you to separate your body, separate your mind from the people, to build the wall, to build the filters, and purify yourself. So it is also a good idea to alternate, to alternate self-discovery, self-awakening on one side and self-expression on the other side. Sometimes you focus on cleaning, purifying, detoxification and self-reflection. On other times you shift and face the world go into the world and carry your light into the world and as you run out of power in the world as you become contaminated as your health goes down if it does you might come back and self-reflect so go into the spiral the spiral and go into the world come back and every time you learn more and you go up and higher and higher. Consider purifying your diet. Consider clearing up your diet. Consider clearing up your lifestyle. Each level of vibration corresponds to a specific diet. So mainstream diet is lower to chakras. So when you go to the world and want to leave these people, consider if your health is strong enough to eat what they eat and to be with them 
in their vibration. It is self-sacrifice. But if your health allows, you can eat what they eat. Low vibration food. But then when you go purify yourself, you might want to exclude all grains, gluten, milk, meat, Go with, uh, yeah, exclude sugar. Psychoactive substances such as coffee and tea and caffeine and chocolate. Fat. And go with high vibration foods which are cooked vegetables. Cooked greens. Cooked lentils and beans. Non-gluten grains like quinoa. Herbs, herbal teas. Unprocessed herbs, just dried. Naturally made. natural produce not rich in sugar and as you go higher in vibration some of you are capable of living by light eating light getting the energy from inside you have that access to energy so when you are in high vibration, you don't need to eat at all. If your health allows that. Some call it zero point field. You abstain the energy right from the universe, right from the source, without using food. You synthesize food inside of you. You synthesize water inside of you. You just breathe, and everything else is miraculously created in your body. But yet, if that high vibrational food doesn't work for your body, it means you didn't reach high enough vibration. So maybe it's proper for you to find a diet which is corresponds to your vibration, to corresponds to your mode of action. Find a diet which is good for you, not ideal body, future body of you, but for you now, for your current state of affairs. So find the optimal food, optimal practical food for your current state of affairs. You might still need light meats like fish and chicken. You might still need eggs. Consider only egg whites. And make an effort to make your food good and tasty and cook it properly. Cook it with love. Cook it with art. For high vibrational foods, usually you cannot find them anywhere in their prepared form in restaurants. You really have to learn how to cook it yourself. Or find someone who would cook it for you. Which is rare. It doesn't make a lot of sense to eat high vibrational food once in a while. It doesn't work that way. It is something which is averaged in weeks. So if you go off milk, off gluten food, you have to stay off gluten food for weeks and months to get the benefit of that. Eating it once in a while, eating vegan once in a while makes no sense, it's only symbolic. For practical purposes, you have to be on diet all the time, not because 
anyone said so, but because you understood and chose, because you understood it is good for your body, because you understood it's good for your spirit, it's good for your purpose, it feels good, only because of that. So understanding comes first. It's not torturing yourself with diet. It is the other way around. It's just realizing with coffee, you cannot get high. Coffee blocks your connection to the spirit. Any caffeine, it allows you to ground yourself, yes, but then you lose intuition. So coffee is anti-intuitive, anti-intuitive. If you have tons of intuition with coffee, that's fine. Of course, it's your choice. You calibrate it to your body, to your genetics, to your spiritual design and genetic design, to your upbringing, to the body you got now. So calibrate, calibrate, optimize, make it practical for you now. But then that diet prevents you from expressing yourself with people because with people you have to sit down and eat what they eat to be together or not. That's a dilemma which you have to solve. It's unsolvable dilemma. Do you eat pure food and live pure life separated from the world or do you go and be with other people? You cannot force them to eat your food. So Sometimes it's possible to bring your own food and sit down with them and eat with them. With time, they forgive that. With time, they accept it. You can still be with them in your heart. You can still be with them in your speech, but yet eat higher vibrational foods. It's possible. Many people do that, and it is acceptable. It's a little inconvenience for them, but is nowadays it becomes acceptable. So it's not such a tragedy to carry your own food with you all the time or to stay hungry all the time, sometimes, and then still stay with higher vibrational foods. Same relates to other areas of physical life. Imagine yourself, your ideal life, your ideal environment. You might want to live in nature, <laughs> near the big living body of water, such a lake, river, creek, ocean, in good ecological conditions, with crisp, crystal air, with beautiful light, beautiful nature, beautiful plants, in the garden, all beautifully kept and cultured. <laughs> no electricity, no electromagnetic radiations. <laughs> Sounds like a different planet. And yet you want to express yourself and for that you need to go into the world and transform the world. So you want to be in the center of action, in the city, in a big city, doing things that matter, doing things that are important. which two opposites almost never combined. It's almost impossible to combine the two. So you might develop the lifestyle when they alternate being in nature and going to people. But at least have that exercise, have that image and carry with you that image of perfection. Build that crystal environment for you wherever you go. Some people are so beautiful inside. Some people are so charged with perfection that any place where they go, any place become shinier, orderly, healthier just through their presence. So charge yourself with perfection to the extent that you transform the environment. 
one thing I mentioned, going into action and doing things that are important. Of course, it's not for everyone to go into the center of action because it's not for everyone. So see what is your self-expression. Very often it is sufficient to take care of one person, one animal, and transform the world through that love with a single being, with this help to single being. Sometimes this single being is yourself. It is sufficient. But yet, as you gain your purity, as you gain your strength, and as the world changes, you might get an opportunity to affect more people or affect people in a bigger scale. So calibrate your health, calibrate your ability and uh, try yourself in a healthy way, try a little bit going into the world, collect the disharmony, bring it back and purify it, transform it in the positive. Sometimes it's sufficient to just to do self-reflection. Discover what you hate, discover what you don't accept, discover what is not okay, discover what makes you afraid or angry or both. and work on it until it becomes acceptable, until it becomes okay. Any relationship, transform it into positive or neutral. Any historical event, transform it within yourself to a neutral one. Raise yourself to the level of high understanding when anything that happens in the physical world is acceptable. Anything that happens, you accept with gratitude. It's a high level of work, but that's the path up. It is a path to ascension. It is a path to healing by accepting anything and transform it in, into a positive. Even your own death can be accepted as a liberation, as a return home. It's not that you want it, but you take a charge from any negative event, from your death, from sickness. You take a charge and through law of attraction, when it is not charged, it is not attracted to you anymore. That's how you work that's how you transform the world, sort of transforming your perception of it. Through law of attraction, you attract the positive side of the world. There are multiple timelines, multiple timelines. And your own state of mind attracts you to a timeline which resonates with you. So. Purify your state of mind. Lift it, uplift it, so you will be attracted to the positive future of the world. You will be attracted to the world which is best of what you can imagine. Be in that state which is attracted to the best world you can imagine. And then your focus of attention will shift, gradually shift to the timeline when it is true, to the timeline where it is true. So your state of mind, your state of being shifts you to the positivity. That's how you transform the world. The more souls 
shift to the positive state of mind. Behavior will be population of that positive world. So by this shifting inside, by this upliftment of inside, you together populate their more positive timeline and it is becoming manifested. It becomes manifested. When more of you go in a positive timeline and become populated, it becomes populated, manifested, and more people are attracted to this positivity. Realize it's a computer game in which no one is working except you. No one is programming anything. It is all play. It's all play. Your play and all other spirit beings, creator beings, supportive beings are playing and creating this reality through their play and self-expression, self-realization. There is nothing else. There is no one sitting and writing the code. It's everybody creating in a similar way you are. Everybody. And you are in charge of your own expression of the universe. You are in charge. Uplift yourself and transform the world to the positive through your self-expression. You are in charge. Do it playfully. Do it playfully. Do it playfully. Amen. Allah ya Allah ya I invite comments and questions. The spirits have told me that I no longer have to eat. I was just thinking about, I'm not hungry and how much I like food. <laughs> and they told me that you don't have to eat anymore. If you wish, drink a little water and you'll be fine. And I wanted to know what you thought about that. And I like everything that you said because it made me think of all this. Thank you. Be practical. Be practical. Do it empirically. Try lighter diets. Go gradually from purifying your diet to pure vegan. To, I have done that. To soups, to broth, bouillon of vegetables. And just reduce, reduce, and see how the body reacts to that. The sign is that you get more energy. If you do that right, you get more energy. You don't lose weight. You just uh, reduce the amount of food gradually and still be in perfect health. If you feel that you are losing the energy and that there is a craving of the body, not the craving of the mind, but craving of the body, you can... Tell the, tell the difference by observing yourself more carefully along, over time. Sometimes it's craving of the habits and sometimes it's craving of the body. The body really needs certain element. Like maybe you can synthesize sugar, natural sugar in your body, but you cannot still synthesize uh, certain elements such as magnesium, calcium, any other copper so maybe you still need some vitamins or some other natural things which you cannot synthesize yet you're not in that state of vibration but yes uh, try to get in touch with the idea of people who eat nothing there is a movement of people who eat nothing except light uh, around the world there is I would say thousands of those so be connected with them, read about it, listen about it, watch it. And uh, that will also help you to get into the right state of mind. It is not only the physical part. It is obviously in a huge extent the state of mind. So 
possibly you can shift to that state of mind. Yes. But do that, do that gradually without impractical, impractical mistakes. Do it in easy way. Sometimes maybe you shift up and you can stay without food, but then maybe your mind would shift down, your state of being can shift down and you might come back to food. So many of the people in that state of being are oscillating between eating and non-eating. You don't have to be, uh, it's not a pro question of commitment. It is a question of self-realization, of realizing who you are and realizing what is best for you. It's only realization what is best for you. There is nothing else. It's learning what is best for you. Thank you. I've, I've asked my body if it wants food and it says no. <laughs> <laughs> and I have gradually moved myself down to where I was only eating natural vegetarian foods. And then one day I didn't eat. And then I kept that up for a while and I thought to myself is my body hungry and my body said no and that's why I ask it, this is, it seemed kind of odd but I have read about people who don't eat and absorb their energies for years and when I first read about it, I thought, wow, that must be hard to do. And the older I get, the easier it is. So I thank you for your information. Your information is always so wonderful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for feedback. Thank you for sharing. Um, consider... Consider, take it easy first. And second, be cautious with whom you share this information. Because it is absolutely okay for you not to eat. But still, if you go out and claim to everyone that you're not eating. Oh, no, that, I would that, never do that. Never. <laughs> that might be prohibited by certain laws of of the matrix. The matrix still want to, wants to protect itself from miracles. There is still a desire of the human collective to keep being in illusion. So the human collective still wants an illusion of struggle. Imagine what will happen to the illusion of economy if everybody stops eating. The economy will fall apart. LAUGHTER <laughs> So the humanity needs, it's its choice. It needs to be hungry. It needs to die from hunger. It is a choice of human collective to be in this their challenging environment. They created this scare, this scary physical reality because of multiple choices of the collective. So yes. respect that. I would like to tell you a dream. I dreamt that there was this uh, plant that looks like a dandelion, only it's much larger, and it had gone to seed, and it was a round little thing of seeds, and the whole thing, the whole plant floated up in the air, and when I reached out and touched it, it went back down into the ground. And then it came up again, and I reached out and touched it. And it went back down. So I picked it up from the bottom, from the stem, and held it up in the air, and it turned into this beautiful green, wide leaf shiny plant with a big blue multi-petal flower on the top. And then I heard, tell no one. That was the end of the dream. <laughs> Here you go. 
So the miracles are for you because for you these are not miracles anymore. You're not asking for proof. You just take it as is. Take it with this as is. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> yay, yay, yay. We'll do a little guided meditation now. Relax, and then I will leave in a few minutes, and you can stay. Relax, relax, sit comfortably, lay down comfortably. Allah, 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 Amma, <clears throat> relax, relax, relax. Allah ya hum. Keep breathing easily, consciously, deeply, slowly at your comfortable pace. Allah umma umma. We thank our bodies. Okay, I thank your bodies. We thank our bodies for the gift of life. Om Alaya, Om. We, can, we thank our bodies as an interface between us and the universe. Allah, 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 Allah. We thank our bodies for being. We thank our bodies for being part of us. We thank our bodies for their service. We come back to repopulate our bodies to be together, embody our bodies. We are the spirit. We come down. We are come in the body and live in the body of this life. We realize the body is an illusion. We realize the body is made of energy. And we praise this energy. We bring back to this energy the soul. We make purpose for this energy. We bring the sense of existence, the understanding of existence, self-realization to our bodies. We bring health to our bodies because we are high, we are spirits, we are powerful, we manifest our bodies. Allah, Allah, ya Allah, Allah. We are in harmony. And everything which is not in harmony is not us. Our body is capable of health, is capable of harmony. That harmony is us. We bring God, Mother, Father, Son, God into the body. Allah. Omar, Omar. Place your palms on your heart. Amma, close the circle, two circles, the heart, the hands, the palms, the heart, and circulate the golden healing energy from the heart to the hands, to the palms, to the heart. Allah. Allah ya Now I give you a minute to silence. I'll give you all <laughs> I will give you a minute of silence. Listen to your heart. You can hear it. Listen and you unite with the beat of your heart. Now the minute of silence, listen to your heart and be one, be beat in harmony with your heart.
<clears throat> work on your blood, populate your blood, become one with your blood. The blood is key to your health. Healthy blood is key to energy. <clears throat> it has everything in it. It has a crystal, a liquid crystal. It is crystallic. It is crystalline. It has DNA in it, white cells, which structures the whole body, structures the vibration of blood, structures the crystal. It has water, which has the memory. It has energy. It creates trillions, more than that. A big number, it creates a big number of vortices, <clears throat> energetic vortices in your body. So be with your blood, flow with your blood. You are liquid, you are fluid, you are in flux, you are moving. You are a community of vortexes. You are a community of vortexes. You exist in every vortex of your blood. You exist through every spiral of your body. Your body has a big number of spirals. Some of them spin very fast. Some of them are Many of them, most of them are portals from the spirit to the material world. You come through these spirals to the material world. Harmonize the spirals, harmonize your energy flows. Bring balance and harmony. Bring strength and purity into your flow, into your vortexes, into your spirals. Your sacred geometry spins, transforms, moves constantly. Your chakras are moving, transforming, transmuting all the time. You are a pattern of energy which moves all the time. You are coming into the world to shine in the world. You shine through your body. Thank your body. Thank this pattern. You are this pattern. Embody it. Manifest it. Manifest health. You have the energy. Manifest it in the world. Manifest it in the body. Purify. Drop what is not needed anymore. Drop your sadness. Drop your mistakes. Keep the lessons, but drop your mistakes. Drop. Choose to drop. Choose to forget the pain. Choose to release the pain of your mistakes. Forgive yourself. Keep the lessons, but release the blockages. Release the...